the AI summit, I think, came out of the realization that although it might feel like a pretty wild year in AI, actually, in some ways, this is the calm before the storm. It's the moment before the next generation of models is released. And so the AI summit was designed to bring together the world to talk about, OK, well, if this technology continues to accelerate in the way it has, what do we do about that? How do we work together to, to, to capture the opportunities and, and, and mitigate the risks? The task the Prime Minister gave us was to, to come up with an agenda that would genuinely bring together the world. Like he, he wanted this to be a broad, inclusive event that would include people not only from a very wide range of, of countries, but also, and it's quite unusual for a diplomatic summit, bringing companies, bringing civil society to have a, a really broad conversation. Now, it's the first AI safety summit. Uh, one of the outcomes of the summit is that it will not be the last. In fact, two more already uh, are planned, one in, in Korea um, in the middle of next year and one in France at the end of next year. But the goal of this summit was to really try and set the table, if you like, for, for future global AI governance work. So really, the, the original objectives were, can we come up with a shared statement about what frontier AI actually is and what the risks are? Can we agree a forward process for how we would continue to have this conversation, hopefully with more and more meat on the bones as, as we go? Third, can we you know, take advantage of this uh, mix of countries and companies and civil society being around the table to actually get the companies to make commitments on their own obligations as they think about how they bring this technology to the world? Fourth, can we say something about how we collaborate globally on just understanding what the state of the science is in this it's a very fast moving field. And fifth, can we somehow do all this while also talking about the opportunity? Because actually the, the whole reason to care about AI safety is because you care about AI. I think one of the challenges of this field is it's an area that until now has been very dominated by thought experiments and analogies and sort of verbal arguments. And the problem with that, although, you know, it can be very stimulating and generative, you know, for every thought experiment, there's an equal and opposite thought experiment that someone else has. What the UK did the week before was publish a set of declassified intelligence assessments that were a review of both the academic literature and expert opinion on where the risks might lie. Again, not just now, but, but next year. Uh, but I think it was a very big moment, and I think it really helped move the conversation on quite a lot, at least within the international community. And then the final thing that we did in the run-up that I think was really important was that one of the things that the UK has done in parallel with the summit, and, and I spent quite a lot of time on this while I was out, was, was set up the UK AI Safety Institute. It's not a regulator or a government department. It's a research-led organization whose job it is to be a global center of expertise in evaluating and testing AI models and systems. And one of the things that the uh, Institute did in the run up to the summit was create a set of demos that could be used at the summit and afterwards that start to try and bring to life some of the risks that we were talking about. So again, you know, I think there's always a risk in AI safety that people jump to you know, some killer robot Terminator scenarios. It's not what the summit was about, despite some of the reporting. The demos were things like showing how you can use even today's AI models to scale up a disinformation campaign or showing how you can, and crucially, and I suppose reassuringly, how you can't use uh, today's AI models to facilitate bioweapon production, but how you might be able to if you know future capabilities improve as quickly as, as they have in the past. And so these, these demos were, I think, very powerful ways to bring to life the conversation and really really animate that. So I don't want to pretend that that meant that when everyone got together, we were all in the same place. I think one of the great things about the two days was very real debate and disagreement. But I do think that it meant that we were starting from a place where we at least all knew what we were talking about when we disagreed. We were able to locate the disagreements and have very productive conversations. Everyone came, including uh, for the first time we had on a platform uh, the US and China agreeing the same uh, statement on AI opportunities, risks, and, and governance, which is quite a historic moment, actually, you know, the first time that's happened. We also had, you know, a lot of the best known names uh, on the on the uh, company side, people like Sam Altman, Melissa Sarvis, uh, Elon Musk, and, and many more, as well as, you know, some of the academics that are, that are well known to have you know, brought this field into existence.
there were three main things that I think will have, I hope, a lasting impact on, on AI safety and governance. The first is just that, that shared statement that, that all 28 countries made in that um, although necessarily, you know, it's no secret that the US and China have a lot of disagreements. Um, so necessarily, you are not going to have an extremely detailed, concrete, you know, set of proposals in the statement. What you do have is a shared definition of what the challenge is, a shared recognition of where some of the risks are, and a shared sense of how international collaboration on those risks might work. And I really hope that lays the groundwork for the Korean summit and the, and, and the French summit, as well as all the other activity that takes place in, in other international bodies, you know, UN, GPAY, OECD, G20, G7, et cetera. So, so then that was the first one. The second is, you, you know, like one of the things that I've observed and one of the challenges in this space is that like so many things today, it, it really risks becoming a polarized, almost culture war type issue. I think one of the things that's been helpful in global approach to climate is having the IPCC, uh, and you know, I don't want to say that's without controversy, but having a sort of emerging scientific consensus come out has been very helpful in climate. That hasn't existed yet in AI. One of the things the summit agreed and came out as, a, as an outcome was a state of the science report that would bring together academics from around the world, nominated by all the countries that took part, to produce for each you know, future summit a report on where the science is. And, we were able to get Yoshua Bengio, one of the sort of godfathers of AI, to, to, to chair that. And I think that's, I hope, going to have a, a big impact, not just the first one, but on an ongoing basis as, as, as we go through. And then the third thing, and actually where I ended up spending most of my time, was this um, agreement that was made between uh, the G7 countries and some other close allies. And in the end, the nine of the biggest AI companies on the role of governments in testing AI models for national security risks. Some of the risks include things like the role of AI in enhancing offensive cyber capabilities, potentially in the future in, in you know, things like bio risk. One of the things that we agreed as, as part of the summit is that before very powerful mm -hmm. AI models are released in the future, they should be tested for these risks. And yes, the companies would do that. I hope, themselves anyway, but actually given the nature of the risks and the kind of expertise needed to understand those risks, there is a really important role for government in that as well. And so one of the things that I uh, helped to negotiate was was the sort of um, statement of principles on how that would work and, and the role of things like the AI Safety Institute in, in testing that. So so I think that's that, that's sort of probably the formal achievements of the summit. But I think for me personally, one of the things I found most encouraging, I suppose, was just observing a lot of the conversations that happened between sessions and, you know, the drinks reception afterwards between people who on Twitter viciously disagree about this stuff. And, you know, you'd think there was no common ground. You know, I don't want to pretend everything is easy and straightforward. You just need to bring people together and talk and everything will be fine. But it does show how powerful that is because, you know, without naming names, I sat in on a conversation, informal conversation between two very, very prominent uh, AI pioneers who, you know, you would have heard of them and know exactly who they are, who, you know, seem like they're coming from completely, you know, polar opposites on this. But actually, there is a, a sort of shared common ground. And it's all around this theme about putting the question of AI safety on an empirical footing and saying, like, what can we actually measure here? How can we turn some of these claims into scientific claims that are falsifiable rather than just say, well, you know, I believe we're going to get to this and you believe we're going to get to that. And it doesn't make some of the hard questions go away. There's lots of hard questions to come if the world wants to really get to grips with this technology. But I, I am reassured that there is a path forward that I think most people can agree on. One of the things that, yeah, taking this uh, break to to lead on the summit and then coming back has done, is it's given me an extremely strong conviction that there is so much to build in this space. And yes, AI safety is a policy question, but it's first and foremost an engineering question. So probably the thing I'm most excited about now that I'm back, thinking about this question through a talent investing lens, who are the people that are going to build the technology that means that AI is safe, seen to be safe, and therefore widely adopted.